Okay, it's three minutes past two. Uh, so I think we are ready for official start of this webinar. Uh, again, warm welcome. My name is Marco. I'm product manager at 3D Survey. Today is also with me, Mattia. Uh, Hi, everybody. So hopefully you can all see us and hear us uh, very well. If not, please write it in check box uh, or question box and we'll try to fix it. But I think everything is working right now. Uh, you are partic participating the webinar 3D CAD drawing on images, uh, effortless and accurate vectorization. Uh, the complete webinar should take approximately one hour. First 10 to 15 minutes, we have a short PowerPoint presentation, and then we will go right into uh, 3D surf so into 3D survey software and show you how this new exciting feature works and what can you do everything with it. So if I continue with my second slide, it's just a short introduction about myself. So my name is Mark Messerich. Uh, I'm a product manager at 3D Survey have quite a lot of experience in uh, surveying field and construction site working. Uh, I also work on more than 1000 projects uh, based on photogrammetry technology. Uh, as I already mentioned, I'm a product manager at 3D Survey and I also trained uh, drone operator. Uh, today, for a bit more refreshing webinar, uh, Matthias Zupan is also with us. He's my colleague at 3D Survey. Uh, Mattia is actually geological geologist, uh, engineer with nine years of experience uh, with natural disaster monitoring. He worked on more than 100 plus photogrammetry uh, projects uh, connected with hazard monitoring projects. Um, he is our quality assurance uh, manager at 3D Survey. So all new releases of 3D Survey software should be more stable and more robust, uh, thanks to Mattia also. And he is also, of course, a drone operator. So he also know how to work with this stuff. Okay. And uh, I would like to start with short introduction. So on the left side, uh, you can already see a short video of how it looks like building corners of a texture 3D model. Uh, nevertheless, how accurately you map the model. So even if you produce 300, 500 points, sometimes on some areas, the model is not too perfect enough for accurate vectorization. And uh, that's why precise extraction of 3D points from a point plot or imperfect 3D model can be extremely challenging. Uh, deciding which point to take from the point cloud, it's time consuming and irritating. And if the model detail is not reconstructed in the point cloud or mesh, you cannot actually extract 3D points. So these are usually details like building corners, roof ridges, road curves, and uh, so on. So, and if you are not being able to extract those 3D points with the help of photogrammetry, this means you need to grab traditional technologies like total stations and so on. And we know this is time consuming. Till now, we always advise our customers or suggest or uh, try to explain them that with the help of photogrammetry, you can actually extract approximately 80% of the details uh, you need, for example, for a survey map generation purely from photogrammetry. But nevertheless, probably you will still need to do some additional terrestrial measurements with a total stations or GNSS device. Usually, uh, hard reachable terrain like building corners or something like that where the model was not calculated perfectly. What's the solution for this uh, important point is uh, cat drawing on images. So we call it like a effortless and accurate vectorization. Uh, on, the life, uh, on the left side of this slide, you can already see how I am uh, drawing images on a 3D mesh. And immediately I can see nicely the accurate position of the selected point also on image and the image has the best possible resolution. And that's why I can also nicely, really quickly correct the exact position with the help of image. So you probably, if you use already 3D survey and draw some uh, CAD, uh, CAD lines or CAD points uh, with our CAD engine, 
based on point node or mesh, you probably notice that sometimes it's hard. You need to decide at which point to take. And uh, in some cases, you are not satisfied. Some cases, you are not, uh, you, you didn't select the accurate position. And uh, with a new feature like CAD drawing for the images, you're ready to go. Uh, just simply correct the position and you get the accurate position of this point uh, 100%. You can create most accurate 3D points even if the 3D model is actually not reconstructed. So what does it mean? Uh, we are not, uh, we are using the point cloud or texture 3D mesh for helping to define the accurate position. But the, at the end, the corrected point on images is once again triangulated and the new, new position is calculated again. And in the next part of the webinar, you will see uh, how actually this can really nicely help you by the daily workflow. So this using this function, no additional terrestrial measurements with the help of total stations are no needed. So before we explain to you 80% extractive photogrammetry, steer measure some points traditional way, we think that with this new improvement, uh, you are 100% covered and you can extract all points you need from your model with the help of CAD drawing on image support. So create a 100 precise model with 3D survey photogrammetry and speed up your work process. And let's say what's today's plan. Uh, so first we would like to show you how can CAD drawing on images help you by extracting the data for survey map. Uh, in this part, I will also explain you the basic stuff about this function, how it works, what kind of options you have, what's important and so on. Uh, then my colleague Mattia will take over and show you how can CAD drawing on images help you by defining an accurate dimension for solar plant. Uh, in the next project, we will show you the fastest way to extract 3D dimensions and areas in case you are preparing some quotations for construction sites, for uh, similar project as that. So maybe uh, even uh, the workflow which you can do on a field. So you will not able to, you, you don't need to calculate point load of mesh. You can immediately go with the drawing on image uh, function and extract data. Let's wait Mattia for this. And uh, the next project will be showing you how can CAD drawing on images help you by extracting the data where the model was not generated. Maybe you had some project in past where the point out was not generated because the detail was too small, maybe just a power line cable or power line tower uh, where the overlap was not good enough and you couldn't extract any 3D point out of it. With these new features, you can extract it. So let's say no more guessing whether you click precisely. So this is really quickly about the PowerPoint presentations. And now I would like to share you immediately my screen with the 3D survey and go to our first uh, project already. Uh, I would just like to remind you, so if there are questions, please feel free to write them in a question box. We'll try to answer them at the end of the webinar or Mat Mattia will maybe type it already immediately if there are sh some short answers. And yes, let's continue with my first example. So uh, here is a one project where we need to create a survey map for this uh, long building. Uh, what we did, we use a Phantom 4 RTK drone. First, we produce a classical 2D mapping with fully perpendicular down images. Then uh, because I would like to have a bit better uh, texture 3D model also with some side images, I actually manual flight in this way and produce kind of uh, two circles around the building. I could do also with the two circles and all together then in the end, I have approximately 180 images from this model. And we see the point cloud result. It looks actually super nicely for the number of images I produced. Uh, if I go to texture it model, uh, most of the details are actually there. And I would say this, this is kind of a average project which our surveyors and construction site workers are doing on a daily basis. You don't have 
1,000 or 2,000 images where you need to wait, uh, let's say, half a day or one a day to process the texture 3D model and get all the data, you are quick and efficient on a field and later on also in the office. So you have between 200 and 500 images. And uh, let me turn off the camera now down. And if I go now in my cat tab and select my uh, layer, which I created throughout and start, start with drawing line tool, uh, I can nicely zoom in on my 3D model and with the left mouse click, I'm just clicking and trying to extract uh, where the position of road is. And we did the same way before this function was available. And we actually extract most of the data out of this, uh, like so. Just drawing it and that's it. What's new right now is you have option on the left side where you actually see accurate positions also on the image. So when I click here on a, a 3D mesh, I immediately see also the same position on my uh, image. And because the image has the best possible resolution, I can really quickly correct it and see this correct position also in a 3D. And with this way, you can super nicely extract out of the uh, most data out of the 3D model, also now with the support of uh, image uh, view, directly image view. So if this was a road, probably I could do this even without uh, image triangulation, but if we go and take a look for more hard reachable details, like a corner here, if I go in a mesh tab and turn on show grid on, you will probably see that the model is already really nice, but maybe not too precise for extracting the exact building corner position, okay? If I switch to my point cloud, the point cloud looks like so, and you remember probably guessing which point to take, we add this point render size uh, that you can ex uh, that you can set the point size a bit bigger to see maybe even better. But nevertheless, now I need to decide which point to take. Okay, and if vectorization, if road uh, off road was before easy, with the building corners probably you had some issues. And that's why we developed this new feature uh, calling cat drawing on images. And now if I go to cat take my draw line tool and quickly set the point in a 3D mesh. I can really nicely, super accurate zoom in on the image and move the exact position. So, and when I'm, when I'm correcting my position on images, the 3D point here is recalculated new and now you can see the exact position then also on 3D mesh. So you can see, see my first guess was somewhere here uh, because I don't see the perfect building corner, but on an image, this is much easier actually. And what I need to do, I just need to correct the position from two, let's say from two different perspectives. In some cases already based on one correction and I already have the perfect position of my building corner right here. Never again, I can always click back and select and inspect here. And as you can see, this corner is now visible actually on 68 images. So if I scroll down on all this corner is actually visible. Uh, what you can do here, uh, you can set a bit bigger or smaller this image triangulation window like so. Uh, you can set your different view styles. Here I can see just one image. If I click on this one, I see parallel two images, or here I see three images parallel, something like that. Uh, we can, we have a zoom in with a scroller. If I'm over the image, I zoom in and zoom out uh, and zoom in from specific image. Then we have a, a zoom, uh, zoom option here for all the images, like so, when I'm moving up and down. 
we just zoom on a complete data set. Uh, then in addition, what you can do, uh, you can undock this part and put on a second screen, for example, and work on a second screen uh, with this part. And again, when you put it back to the left side, you hook the, uh, this wizard again here. If you don't want to use this wizard during the vectorization, so let's maybe go this way and back to cat. For example, if I'm vectorization, uh, vectorizing here a road and I don't need this kind of uh, feature, simply just close down and continue working without the image support. If you would like to see it again, just click this icon again and immediately see, okay, maybe I didn't select here the perfect position, let's correct it. And you can see when I correct the position on single images, on all other images, the position was immediately recalculated. Also in 3D model, this position was recalculated. And with this way, you can get the most precise position out of your 3D model, actually. Uh, what's good to know also, when we select the position of specific detail, so when we select uh, which one image to show you, uh, we actually design it this way, that the images are selected from the same perspective as you are viewing in 3D model. So, uh, and also when you correct those position on images, it's great that you correct the position on two images, which, were which are from a two different positions also, okay? So you would like to have two rays, which are not fully from the same position, but from a bit different position. If you look, uh, look for example, for example, for this one, so I correct now on this position, now I will just rotate it maybe in a bit different way. Okay, this is the perfect uh, image, let, let's, let's say so. Then I need to scroll down a bit and I also correct for this one. Again, if I go to my second detail, uh, let's zoom out maybe for all them. When I rotate the model, you see new images are visible in a number of image uh, pop-up. And with this way, we actually help you to select the perfect image even uh, already at the beginning and immediately. Okay, cool. So this was short uh, explanation how to do it, uh, how the software works uh, with uh, this uh, thing, how CAD drawing on images can help to extract out the detail. Uh, and uh, nevertheless, if there are some questions, please write them in a question box. Uh, and now I would like to give my word to my colleague, uh, Mattia, who can continue with uh, our second example. Hi. Uh, so maybe before we go on, uh, I would like to remind you uh, that uh, if you don't know how to ask a question, there is a red arrow uh, somewhere on the right of your screen. Uh, click that to expand the uh, the interface and you will be able to um, ask the question. So uh, maybe Marco, would you like to answer some questions uh, already now or should we leave them for later? Um, I would leave those questions for later. We already have uh, 10 or more questions, so uh, feel free to add them by and we will uh, answer them less than 15 minutes. So maybe okay. Uh, so, yeah, let's go to one another um, example. I will just uh, change this to my screen. So, let me open up this project. Uh, okay, can you see? Yes. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> So this is the example that you have seen in the side video of the introduction. Um, this is a project where a customer wanted to install a solar power plant on this roof. And we did a quick flyover with uh, Mavic Mini 2, so a very budget drone. Um, we flew in uh, manual mode. So, um, uh so it was um 
just a second. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and then we did some vectorization to calculate what surface is available for our solar power plant. Um, so as you see, I have already done some roof edges and now let's vectorize some more um, obstacles. We open up the um, CAD module drawing with images support here, as Marco has shown you. You can resize this um, image size. Let's say this is enough. And as you can see, this is really helpful for pinpointing the edge of this chimney like so. And I can continue drawing this chimney on the next corner. Maybe I'd like to see more images as I rotate. They also rotate, but as most of them were taken from above, uh, there's not so, so much difference. Uh, and I don't have to be very specific, um, very accurate when I'm clicking on the model because I can all um, fix it later. So I just click very fast, move it here. I can also zoom in here, all right. And there we have it. Okay, um, since we have already done a bit of uh, this vectorization, I can just uh, turn it back on. And in this case, we um, sent this uh, CAD image. Uh, we saved it and sent it to our client. And then he returned the uh, panels layer back to us. And we loaded it back in and we saw if, it's, if it fits okay. Uh, if we want to check some details, we can do so. For example, here, uh, we can inspect this corner. Okay, is it okay if the corner of the panel comes here? I think it is okay. And so maybe this one is too high up. Yeah, perhaps we should move these panels a bit lower and mm, stuff like that. So it makes uh, planning a solar power plant much easier. Um, and now uh, I would like to show you also another project. Um, just a second. Okay. Um, this will be a bit different, uh, different approach. For example, uh, if you are doing something on the field, uh, perhaps you want to make a very quick estimation of uh, some sort of uh, area. How big is the area? What is the, um, what is the 3D measurement? What is the length? And uh, um, uh, how big, for example, the parking lot is? You can do, let's say, uh, 78 images, and then uh, this is enough to have a good uh, project. Now, uh, as you know, first thing we do when we use 3D survey is bundle adjustment. This gives us a sparse point cloud. This is just a point cloud of uh, points that are used as a tie points. And what you can do here is you can convert it to point cloud here and it will serve as a proper point cloud which you can use in CAD module and do some other stuff with. And now I will switch over to the video uh, that we pre-recorded. Uh, just a second. Uh, video, okay. It should load in a few seconds. And now you will see how we can... Um... Okay, are we ready? start. Now we will transform this video into a point cloud. Okay, Mattia, just unmute yourself now. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, on this sparse point cloud, we can also use this CAD uh, drawing on the images support. I can click on a point that is uh, in this sparse point cloud and still get the images to decide very exactly where the 
point that I've placed should be. And I can also do measurements on this uh, very sparse point cloud. Um, and this all together should take us about three minutes. So this is really convenient to do on the field where you have to do some quick measurements. You see this video was less than a minute long. I will switch back to my screen now. Okay, we're back. And if we check this in the uh, project, we go to CAD and just select this uh, polyline that we've drawn. We can also see the 2D area of this, um, of this parking lot. And imagine you can do the flight in three minutes, import images in one minute, do the bundle adjustment in a minute, and do the measurements in a minute. 10 minutes is uh, uh, more than enough time to do something like that on the field, no additional equipment needed. So I think this is really handy for uh, a lot of construction site workers. Okay, okay, perfect, Mattia. Before maybe we go further to next project, so I would just like to yeah. recap here because a lot of things are happening here. So was the here the complete idea with the support of this new feature? So CAD drawing on images. No, you don't need to have actually a perfect 3D model, perfect point cloud or perfect mesh. As you saw it, Mattia just draw it on a sparse point cloud. So sparse point cloud is result after the bundle adjustment. Uh, so, which is the first step and super quickly, he just click the, bu uh, the uh, button convert to point cloud. And as you can see, it, he approximately set the uh, point or the line position on a sparse point cloud. And then with the help of CAD drawing on images, set the correct position on image. And with this, he defined the most accurate position of a point and extract also 3D dimensions and uh, 2D and 3D area uh, based uh, on the help of this new function we just added to the latest version. So this is kind of fascinating. Uh, it's kind of a shortcut, shortcut because usually customers are doing bundle adjustment, then orientation, reconstruction, and then they start with CAD. Uh, but now when you have image support by drawing the CAD lines, you can actually in some cases also skip the reconstruction step, which is kind of the most time consuming. Uh, and uh, if this is the right workflow, workflow for you, you can now do this also. Yeah, so this is kind of a, a advanced user uh, trick. I mean, it's really simple, but uh, uh, not everybody knew it before. So uh, we thought this is something um, really good to share with you. <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, now I think we can all uh, look at uh, my last example where I will show you that uh, you can also draw um, draw cat points and lines somewhere where your point cloud or uh, 3D mesh was not reconstructed. Um, this can happen for um, various reasons. For example, if you're doing scanning of um, power lines, um, this is often the problem that you're flying uh, too low. So, for example, um, we didn't get this top of the power line tower. And because we're doing this analysis of power lines, we still need to know where it is. Um, now, with the help of this new feature, you can go to CAD and say you will create a new point let's call it top um, and now you have to place it somewhere on your point cloud so place it somewhere close to where the top should be and now you can move it on the images to its uh, correct position uh, we recommend you do that on various images uh, i will show you in a second because you have to do it, as Marco said, from various points of view. So you get these rays that are crossing uh, each other on uh, different angles. 
uh, this way you can really increase your um, accuracy. So let's say this is now good and you can see if I rotate this, this is where the top should be. And you can also add lines to this now. For example, if you want to reconstruct the whole tower. Um, yeah, something like this. Uh, okay. And uh, no problem doing that also on the lines. You can, lines are a bit difficult a bit more difficult to see on the uh, images, but you can also do that. Um, yeah, and this is also like um, just another um, trick or uh, life hack you can do in 3D survey. Uh, okay, I think this is all from my side. Um, or thank you, we thank you, Mattia. So yeah. I will switch to, let me just share a screen again from my site. Okay, perfect. Hopefully you can see my screen right now. Okay. And uh, again, I have here another additional example. Uh, actually, this was projects from this was project from one of our customer uh, where he need to vectorize the complete roof uh, because they need to rebuild it they need to get all the accurate positions of the 3d dimensions how much material they actually needed and so on and they actually use this fe feature to accurately vectorize out uh, all the necessary data and you can see we have here two layers. So the one layer are lines in, uh, lines in red, where do we have the uh, exterior roof dimensions uh, of this roof. And then all the other objects uh, are marked with a yellow layer. And the same way, they just click it, correct the positions on images and extract all the necessary detail. Uh, for example, if you need uh, something like, uh, let's say, slope of the roof or something like that, you can immediately go here in the measuring tool uh, because the drawing on images works on draw line tool, on measuring pool, tool, on new point tool, and maybe show you first how the measurement works. So I have here 3D distance. In this case, I would like to know the slope of me, uh, my specific roof. I will snap on this part and then go straightly down like so. Uh, if I select now my position, I see where this is pointing on the, roof, uh, on the roof again. So this way, and I can see it's in this case, 60, uh, sorry, 40, 46.6 degrees. Uh, I could do it more vertically uh, then it will be even more accurate, but then let's say just that you have idea how it works in this way. Then maybe one, one just uh, quick mention. If you would like to use uh, at point tool and cat drawing on images, uh, you select the tool. Uh, sorry, let's zoom in a bit. For example, I need to have this manhole. When you put the point on it, you will first not see where this point is actually in images. What you need to do, click on escape button or keyboard or select the select tool and you need to select the point and then this function is actually uh, in action, okay? Just remember it when you are using adding point tool, you also need to select them then later on to see it. With the draw line tool, you immediately see the exact position. Uh, also on the images, with the adding a new point tool, you just need to go to select tool and select it because then this function is activated. Okay, uh, cool. So uh, hopefully this was interesting topic for you. Uh, and uh, let's check 
know the questions. If there are still some of them, please feel free to set them in a question box and we will try to answer them right now. Uh, I see we have a number of questions here available already now. Um, and if we go to our first question is uh, Lucas Rochrancher. Uh, can you already tell me which drone do you use for calculating this model, which height and so on? Okay, because this question was right at the beginning, I assume this is for my first project where we did uh, uh, survey map extraction. So this was done with the Phantom 4 RTK and uh, we actually did a single grid flight on uh, 60 meters and then I did a two manual circles around the building. The first one was on a 40 meters with a 75 degrees and next one on 30 meters on 60 degrees. So this is kind of uh, best time performance for nice 3D models, for good enough 3D models uh, where you can achieve uh, enough detail that you can extract most of the data out of it. Um, okay. Let me search for second question. Uh, hello at all. Okay, again, uh, Lucas is adding a question. Which flight models did you use? Okay, I already explained this one. And how many GCPs did you use? So uh, about the GCPs, uh, we advise you to use uh, at least one GCP if you have an RTK drone, because it helps you to define the height of the model. Uh, but nevertheless, the best practice is four GCPs if you have a RTK drones on four corners, then you have uh, additional measurements, you can check the accuracy independence and so on. But minimum uh, one GCP is what we, uh, we advise our customers. So when we test the RTK drones like Phantom 4 RTK, no, the Mavic 3 RTK is uh, available and uh, so on. When we test those drones on the same project on the 10 flights uh, with four flights, the accuracy was really good enough without GCP points on the six flights, we have displacement between 10 and 20 centimeters in the height. But you can nicely solve this with a single GCP points and that, that's super fine then. Um, okay. Let's go to the next questions. Okay, then there is a question how to switch the coordinate system between the projects. Uh, if you have issues with the coordinate systems, uh, because you have a ghost trigger coordinate system or so local coordinate systems, I would just advise you, please write email on our support email. So support at 3dserve.si and we will help you with this uh, thing out. We have there some workarounds. Um, Yes, and again, with the coordinate system, it is possible to change it. Uh, actually, you define the coordinate system right at the beginning of the software and it's not able to change it later on. We have some transform options available in the software that you can transform actually the complete model, but uh, then you need additional points. Again, for more advanced things, free, feel free, just uh, send us support email and we will answer it. Okay, let's go to next question. So Mustafa from Turkey is writing us. I'm from Turkey. It's a revolutionized 3D drawing thanks to 2.16 version and 2.16 version supported. Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you for feedback. We are also excited about this function and I think it's super powerful. So if uh, you didn't check the function, how it works right now, uh, let's do that. You will see it's kind of super, super nice uh, option to work with the 3D data. Uh, okay, next question from Mustafa is, I have two questions. When area region drawing option we will add? Uh, not sure I understand these questions. Uh, so when area region drawing option we will add? Okay, so please Mustafa Vrai, additionally your questions or contact us on support, okay? Uh, okay, next question from uh, Ravindra. Is it possible to draw circle, circular line for cat? Uh, okay, 
So which option you have with the circle is actually draw circle option. Uh, so you generate the center of the circle and then uh, you go out of it. Again, you can correct it immediately or maybe here. Uh, later on with the selection, so this is possible. Uh, if you mean with a polyline and circles or something like that, it's not possible. So uh, you can actually uh, draw a curve with a more smaller polyline actually. But if you, may, you mean uh, drawing circle line, use the circle line tool, okay? Hopefully I answered to your question. Uh, next question, what height did you fly with the Phantom 4 in the first model? Okay, we already answered this one, 60 meter on a, a single grid and then uh, 40 and 30 meters on a side images. Uh, cool, if there are some questions, there is still time, feel free to add them, okay? Uh, so, Next comment from Diana. How cool is that? Thank you, Diana. We are also excited. Excited. Thank you. And then uh, again, Mustafa, what do you suggest workflow? For example, one, add data bundle adjustment, orientate, create point slot mesh, and end drawing. Yes, correctly, Mustafa. So the main workflow will probably still stay the same. So if you have time, do the bundle adjustment, do the orientation, dense reconstruction where you get a point cloud and then you can go to mesh calculation where you get such a nice 3D model and then you are ready to go with uh, drawing uh, lines uh, with the help of image support with no problem, okay? Uh, cool, let's see. Okay, we have another question from Luca. Is there an option to see the accuracy of the point we place on image? Usually, stereo mapping provides some accuracy report. Okay, so let me show you what's possible to see. Good question. So, when I show my uh, first position on 3D mesh here on a corner, and for example, when I go and, sorry, backspace to delete last uh, point with a draw. When I zoom in and correct here a position, then you can see the red point, the red small point is here added and all, all other images is this uh, point actually also visible. So when I'm correcting this one, it's actually recalculated. So what does it mean? Uh, if we move the position of uh, actually uh, on, a on a point on image, the point will be marked red. So it, uh, it notice you, okay, you already correct here the position and this new position is now used for new triangulation, okay? What you can do if you're not satisfied, uh, right mouse click on this red point and you can delete this observation. Uh, you can delete other observation for this point if this one is supported. Uh, and uh, all you would like to do, you have option to delete all observation of this point. Um, and of course, the last point, confirm position and delete other observation for all other points. So in this way, you can have some control what's happening with the 3D point. Uh, so, uh, in a mean that you would have some kind of pixel error and how it's recalculated, I'm not sure, maybe there's an option, but I don't have in mind right now. Uh, I have your email, so maybe we will contact you later on. Uh, but nevertheless, this should be more accurate calculation uh, in comparison if you draw just based on point out on just based on mesh. Because if you call, if you draw lines based on point cloud, you need at the end on a snap on a some specific point which was reconstructed during the uh, point cloud calculation, or snap on specific mesh. And if the triangle triangle is not perfect, then then the three D point is also not so accurate. But with here you can have so called sub pixel resolution, so you can zoom in 
and uh, you need to keep in mind that actually the images are the best resolutions which come in the software all other results have a slightly slower resolution so texture of the mesh will never be so uh, in a such a nice resolution as image so that's why we are explaining uh, this is the most accurate way but yes let's also support you with uh, uh, more technical data if there are some uh, definitely on the back side but not sure if they are visible here in front uh, okay so questions where they are in just a second okay this was from Luca okay then uh, Daniel Stoiber I often get direct now direct under the roof a big mesh bubble like in this model right now is there a way to get rid of it okay yes good question again let's zoom to this focus the all other uh, attendees can see what you mean so because we didn't let me maybe switch to this point cloud first uh, because we didn't have a perfect point cloud from here because most of the images were taken from the drone uh, just from the upper side we couldn't extract no point cloud under the roof as you can see it here also the uh, probably here as you can see the complete facade was not visible because the sun was probably too strong and uh, the customer didn't set the camera correctly uh, we actually uh, we can also solve this part with the help of drawing on image support but how you can actually remove this bubble is uh, you can just go and actually select your area of interest and you delete this bubble out of it but then you will lose the triangles and so on but nevertheless if you would like to draw now maybe or extract some detail from the cat from this part again let me see what's possible to get okay you see i clicked here i actually didn't know what i select but on an image i can see exactly this position but if i would like to have here the upper side so where the facade goes into the building of course i need to have this image okay otherwise i cannot extract this one but maybe more interesting is actually this facade because we see here we have no point cloud here we have some white mesh let me see what do we have here if i go on image support actually super nice example uh, here are two windows visible but were overburned because of bad images let me try to define the position of building uh, the image corner if i do like so from two different images uh i could probably get a super nice position then also so if you would have good images here would be the building corner actually okay okay quite advanced questions really great to hear them uh, just a second uh, we missed a few questions okay. we missed okay i'm going now from the back uh, to up so just okay. go, just to not lose myself we have a number of questions okay next question is uh, i often get direct okay this one is already solved uh, so lucas is uh, asking us how would you recommend us to fly for a complete and detailed facade surveying okay good questions uh, and i have already one example here open which i was planning to show you if we do not run out of the time uh, but let's do it right now so if you are just interested for facade modeling uh, then maybe this is a really nice approach uh, in this case, we've been using a Mavic Mini 2 drone, which is just 250 grams or something like that. Uh, and we use a 3D survey pilot 
free flight mission app which offers you automatic triggering images on uh, let's say two or three seconds or the uh, second option is let's say every two three or five meters you just define the distance and the drone automatically triggers the camera and then i was just uh, flying the drone you see this blue pyramids uh, left and right and uh, the images were automatically capturing and with a, such a small drone uh, with 12 megapixel camera I get all this kind of detail okay it's true the texture was also nice and there was no strong sun but nevertheless these are the perfect conditions then at the end for facade modeling and then with the help of this new feature we again extract all those details manually so this was not automatic we manually extract all those uh, details from the texture 3d mesh with the help of images also and then of course probably also know you are able to generate a custom plane orthophoto so it goes like that you define your position right mouse click on the planes to set the area of interest also here down i think everything is nice you can also rotate the complete uh, area of interest that you set it perpendicular to your uh, uh, facade and click calculate and in a couple of seconds you have the uh, orthophoto from the facade also like so okay auto save is on okay i lose a bit of orthophoto here uh, because i didn't uh, uh, select my uh, bounding box or area of interest too further back i would need to extrude it additionally and then i will also have this part here uh, okay uh, lucas hopefully i answer your questions gunnar blahe has one question possible to export CAD data they accept with full coordinates to get the right zone means to have instead of okay Gunnar Blache please just write us on support email my colleague Witt is there he's a coordinate system expert uh, uh, already helped number of times so just please send us email and we will contact you directly okay because um, when you export the DXF you get in the same coordinates that uh, project is so uh, the the software uh, the system of the software is what you see is what you get so if you go to your point cloud or and uh, use the point snapping tool if you see these coordinates and you save those uh, these dxf files uh, you will have the same coordinates in 3d server and if you need to give them in some other coordinates uh, please just uh, contact us on support okay dimitrios chelios question what about a combination of a drone flight and a 3d scanner tool for example faro that also takes photographs while scaling is it possible to view photos in the sorry oh uh, uh again is it possible to view photos in the cat process okay so never the definitely you can bring the point cloud scan from the far, uh, far easily in the 3d survey and combine it with photogrammetry just go to point cloud load and import uh, this point cloud in the same project with the photos i'm not sure uh, definitely uh, we will need to check if this is a if this is a oblique camera or you have more uh, more uh, camera positions there and we don't have support currently that we could place immediately just these photos based on some uh, exif data so this is uh, not yet available it's in our long-term development plan definitely to support this even more uh, what could be possible if those photos are quality you could do the bundle adjustment just with the help of those photos and then orientate this uh, uh, result uh, with the help of uh, scanned data uh, maybe if you have option to share a data set with us and we can have a look how it goes but definitely for now point clouds you can easily merge them together and uh, so on 
Uh, cool, Ravindra has another question. We are planning to protect beach erosions. We need to create the profile of proposed wall along the high point of existing wall. What to draw center line along, the, how to draw center line along highest point? Okay. Let me just extend this one. Uh, so let me just quickly check the question again to understand this one. The proposed wall, the proposed wall along the highest point of existing wall. So uh, if I understand it correctly, I would just use actually our CAT2 engine and draw a single line with a draw line tool and save this as a DXF. And then uh, when you calculate the profile, uh, you, you are able to import this center line actually, and the new profiles are uh, calculated based on imported uh, CAD line. Hopefully I answered this correctly. If not, uh, Ravindra, please remind me again, okay? Uh, okay, Rana Ibrahim, thank you for perfect uh, presentations. Thank you, Rana. Uh, okay, let's check again. Mattia, do we have more questions? Can you maybe help me with it? Yeah, uh, so uh, we have a question about academic version uh, for students. Okay. Um, we offer those two. Uh, and then we have a question about um, the free flight in iOS app, uh, which I believe is sadly unavailable. Uh, oh, correctly, yes. So the free flight is available just for Android version, correctly. Um, and then we have, uh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, how can we export the proper point cloud for a beam software? This is from Chris Vergis. Um, okay. okay, so um, exporting the point cloud from beam software. Um, so the most common file formats for point cloud are usually LAS, so laser file formats or E57. So I would first try to go with E57, okay? Uh, and then if you like to import it in AutoCAD or something like that, we have a nice web uh, tutorial also on YouTube, I think. Uh, you will probably need to use Revit software, which is also from Autodesk, and then import it in AutoCAD. But for standard Beam softwares, I would uh, first start with E57, and probably it will go. Okay. Um, another question from Chris is, um, if we offset the height of the point cloud or 3D mesh, the photos are losing accuracy. Can we fix this? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. not sure if this happens or... Mm, Chris, if you mean this with transformation tool, uh, with the new version of 3D Survey 2.16, you have their option to select also, transform also the complete project. So maybe if you did uh, with the previous version 2.15 and you did some transformation, then we move just the model and not, uh, then we just move the point cloud or mesh and not the complete uh, camera position and complete model. With the 2.16, this is now also available and uh, this is now then option, uh, this is now available, but not sure if you mean uh, this question with this one. Uh, yeah, uh, if it's more advanced, uh, then it's a question for read at support. <laughs> okay, I think uh, Mattia, ah, okay, Chris, uh, in, uh, Chris just mentioned it, yes, he mean that. Okay, great. Okay, one hour is over. Uh, 
hopefully it was uh, super interesting uh so it was super interesting webinar for you a lot of questions at the end also connected with other topics but nevertheless use these opportunities uh to answer here in the live uh we also have good support so if you have some questions feel free to use it and um, i think this was our last webinar for this year next year we again plan to have a webinar at least once per month so we can share this new knowledge with you uh, hopefully you like this new feature cat drawing on images you see it uh, useful and hopefully it will help you by your daily work on your projects and uh, yes this was all from uh, our site Mitya, Mattia would you like to add something <laughs> Uh, no, just uh, thank you all for coming and um, staying with us for the whole hour. <laughs> Hope you liked it and, uh, well, see you next time. Okay, thank you. Happy 3D surveying. Bye-bye. <laughs>